Greetings fellow subscribers, welcome back to another Disney Plus review. We are going to do Monster University. This is the first prequel for Pixar. It came out, let's see, okay. Yeah, it came out um, June 21st, 2013. The budget was $200 million and they made two hundred. Uh, they made over $743 million, which is a box office success. And a lot of critics like this film. It, 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 yours truly, but which we will discuss about that. Okay, so it's directed by... Don Scanlon and um, screenplay Don Garrison, Rob L. Bayard, and Don Scanlon himself. So pretty much Don Dan um, think about making a, a prequel instead of a sequel. Actually, here's the thing though. Years ago, um, they were having disagreements with Pixar and, and Disney tasked Circle 7 Animation to, to make the film. They were drafted to develop it. However, when Disney purchased Pixar in 2006, that version of the film was canceled. So then Pixar made a sequel was confirmed for 2010. But in 2011, they said, like, eh, let's make a prequel instead. Because let's show them how monsters were monsters before they go to Monsters, Inc. So they had to go to college called Monsters University. So it's pretty much Mike Lukowski um, wants to be a monster trying to scare kids and try to be um, a big honcho so that way he can try to... Um, Try, trying to get to um, Monsters, Inc. To do so, he had to go to this college called Monster University. Later on, he met this um, his rival, Sully. Um, that might be Sullivan, anyway. And both of them are voiced by Billy Crystal and John Goodman, which is good, because if they were having two different voice actors from the, from the original Monsters, Inc. and not have them, oh boy, this movie would have flopped. Because those two did so good for those two characters. It's good to have those back. And of course, Steve Buscemi got his character as Randall. Um, then later on, they got like Helen Mirren, who is the dean of the whole university. Also, they have like Dave Foley, got Charlie Day, got Nathan Fillion as the big baddie um, from a different monster. Um, let's see, you know, like the um, frat brothers kind of thing. So yeah, so they got the... These frat brothers kind of thing um, into the mix. So it's pretty much a, like an uh, animal house without the sex and um, sexual humor and, and the swearing. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So Mike Wachowski was trying to do his best. Trying to prove himself that he's a scare, a scary monster. Unfortunately, it didn't work out very well for him. And along the way, he tried his best. And then there was the games that he were gonna, he's going to try to scare them. Unfortunately, um, of course, Sullivan what actually did not like him very much. It's like, you know, I don't like this nerd, and we're gonna, and I'm gonna, um, just pick on him and stuff like that. It's like, come on, guys, you're friends, but it makes sense because when you do prequels, you gotta make sure that you are trying to, um, do the story differently than it did with the Monsters Inc. So, and that's why they made Monsters at Work, which we'll have to review that much much later on the road. But I want to do um, most of the movies first before I do TV programs and then Disney Plus originals. So yeah, I'll get to those eventually. But take it's going to take me some time, but I'll, I'll get to them as much as I can. But I'll make sure I'll watch them first before I review it. So anyway. So let's, let's talk about the story. Okay, so like I said about the story, it's a prequel to Monsters, Inc. Um... It tells the story of these two main characters, <clears throat> two main characters of Monster Inc. Sorry about that, choking up. Um, in their time in college, when they start off as rivals, but slowly became friends. During that time, they must learn to work together along with Uzuma Kappa members in order to make his the reality and things right. But like I said, it was very very hard for this one because I I've said is this gonna work? I even watched the previous. It was funny, but I said is that gonna work? Well, I was wrong. Actually, it did work. But not fully, though. Because, actually, the, f the feeling of doing a prequel of a classic movie, it's very, very hard to do. Especially, you can't, you can't match up with the other things like that. So, anyway. Oh, sorry about the beep thing. That was my messenger. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, the thing is that Monsters University, they, sh they show this grander of scale of a university that shows about scaring kids which i like that a lot and i do like this the stereotypes as well because come on you gotta have gotta get colleges we gotta get the bullies the frat brothers 
um, the cheerleaders and stuff like that. Yeah, you got to get those. If you don't get any of those, yeah, that didn't work out very well. So, you know, the thing is, I thought this is actually a good heartwarming tale. I thought it's, I thought this was going to be like, oh, no, Pixar, you're going back down again, aren't you? Nah, not fully. Because even though, um, to me, this one is not the best Pixar movie to date, but it's still, still a good attempt for doing a prequel. Because this is the only prequel movie they have in the whole Pixar universe. So good thing good thing they decided to make a sequel of Monsters, Inc. as a series, Monsters at Work, than just making it a, just a movie. I thought that's a good idea because Disney Plus like to do something different. So might, might, as well, might as well do that. Anyway, so yeah, so these guys, um, yeah, the voice cast. Oh my gosh, the voice cast did... Um, this so much well on each character is like wow. It's actually like rewatching Monsters Inc. And that was the big gripe for me because it felt like I'm rewatching the movie again, even though they did change the story a little bit and the voice cast do their best in it with the story they have. It felt that this film may not be the um, pinnacle of Pixar standards, but the thing is though, it is hard to do. You can't you can't make a classic all the time. Yeah, you can't make every film a 5 out of 5 kind of thing. Because that's the thing, though. Um, yeah, you just, just got to um, try something that doesn't feel like it's going to be a uh, cash grab kind of thing. Which this one film doesn't. But in some sense, there's certain, there's certain people may feel the same way as I am. But I will just say yes, this, actually, this is actually a very good attempt for doing a prequel. If they done If they've done the same way as Monsters, Inc., and have and have them do do almost the same style as Monster Inc. Yeah, that movie will flop. But I'm glad I did because I like monsters. I like I like Monsters Inc. I love it. I watched that movie so many times. It's just that's why I give it five out of five. I love that movie so much. But then when I watch this one, it's like, well, actually, it was cute. It was heartwarming. I love the main characters. The voice cast did a great job. Animation, of course, is amazing. Cause come on, you got Pixar. You got to do a lot of good animation here, and there, and every time they made an animated film from Pixar, it feels like, it feels like yeah, they're they're just made amazing there, very very amazing. All I gotta say is, um, the only gripe I I gotta say is it didn't feel like um, a a classic being reborn. Now nah, it just it just went backwards just a little bit. But, however, what it, what this um, story did for me before I was going to lower it even more is that the heartwarming is there. Because having these two monsters being friends after being rivals, and then the second cast for the Opa Cop, uh, which is okay, of course, um, trying their best to be the monsters themselves, all I got to say is, wow, I enjoyed this. I I actually I I actually enjoy this movie, and I'm glad I'm gonna rewatch this again. I'll probably rewatch this before I go to Disney World because, yeah, if you're going to Dis if you're going to Disney World, um, I recommend you go watch some Disney movies so that way you're make yourself excited and show the kids um, how fun these movies are. Yeah, I I I enjoy this. This one is actually a fun film, despite it's not like the best of Pixar. But I thought this one is a great attempt. They just they just can continue making uh, some movies like this, and this will help. Um, this will make it even grander for everyone who wants to like it. So, but come on, come on, two hundred million dollar film, and they got seven hundred forty three million. Yeah, now that shows they know what they're doing. So, okay, so we're gonna give this one a uh, four out of five. I think four out of five is a great rating for me. Yeah, this film it's this film is actually good. Yeah, it seems to me I like pretty much every Pixar film to date. So no matter what they do, I always brought back to Gold Pixar, and so is Disney. Because when the other animation companies tried their best, they always fell apart because they don't know what they're doing anymore. And with the small independent companies, um, they need to work on their strive a little bit and try to make it more fun heartwarming and original if you do that then you might compete with them <laughs> the only ones competing right now is illumination entertainment with minions 
Especially that Minions movie is doing pretty good. So, which we're not going to talk about that because that's for Universal. We're at Disney Plus. So, anyway. So, yeah, I highly recommend go check this one out because you definitely need to. You definitely need to see this movie. Thanks for watching. All the movies, cartoons, and reviews I do are on Disney Plus. Make sure you follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe below. I will see you on the next review.